praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you, come all you people. people. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise come your, your maker. Come, all come, all people. People. come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, come and praise your maker. Come, come now and come worship come the Lord. Tina Martin, why? Good morning and welcome to Church Online Kilmarnock and to our worship for this Sunday, the 31st of January 2021. We gather in a week just past when news has been filled with COVID numbers and ongoing restrictions, intention to keep us safe, where we have paused for a moment as a world to lament on things done and things undone throughout the pandemic. And as many mark Holocaust Memorial Day this past Wednesday, and a dark and shameful time in humankind's existence. We gather, and we still find ourselves able to say thanks to God for his love, his guidance, and his peace. So let us join together in peace, sharing our praise, and in joining in worship with the freedoms that have been de denied to so many down through the ages. And now, here's my friend Jim, who will share his own words of welcome. Thanks, Taylor. Well, here we are now at the end of January, and already the days are beginning to lengthen. Welcome to our worship together, as we focus on the healing love of Jesus and the light that shines in the darkness. and girls. It's time for your prayer and I thought this week we would pray 
when I'm out doing my muddy walk, I'm out doing my sound walk and I'm at the beach, my very favourite place. And I thought we would just pray at the beach this week. So let's pray together. God, you are amazing, wonderful and wise. We are so happy that we are your children. Thank you for all the people you give us to love. And thank you for the beauty of your creation that we can see all around us and enjoy when we are out walking. Thank you for Jesus. He helps us to know you and he shows us that we need to love each other and to love you with all our hearts. We want to be more like Jesus, to love everyone the same, to help those in need and to share what we have and what we know with others. Thank you that you listen when we pray. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I found out that today is the first day of National Storytelling Week. And all over the country for seven days, people will be sharing stories and listening to stories and having fun with stories. I absolutely love a story. And you can see behind me on my bookshelf that I've got lots of books there that are full of stories that I like to read. But one thing that's even better, I think is even better, than reading a story is listening to someone tell a story. And a man who told us all sorts of stories was Jesus. And Jesus used his stories when he wanted to explain things to us that were maybe a bit tricky. And his stories helped us to understand. And one of those stories is a story called The Lost Sheep or The Lost Lamb. And I want to read you a version of that today, which is slightly different to the ordinary version. It's called Every Last Lamb. A shepherd had a hundred sheep, but one of them wandered away. Was she lost in a bog? Was she chased by a dog? It's really hard to say. For every last lamb is special, and no sheep should be left alone. So the shepherd will make any trip he must take to bring his lost sheep back home. The shepherd set off in a hurry and left 99 sheep behind. He climbed over hills, took a couple of spells, fell hard on his head and behind. For every last lamb is special and no sheep should be left alone. So the shepherd will make any trip he must take to bring his lost sheep back home. As night turned to day, he found her. His sheep was so sad and forlorn. No sign of a bog, no mad barking dog. She was trapped in a bush full of thorns. For every last lamb is special, and no sheep should be left alone. So the shepherd will make any trip he must take to bring his lost sheep back home. He carried her to the sheepfold, and gently he set her down. Then he called to his mates, let's all celebrate, my sheep that was lost is now found. For every last lamb is so special, and no sheep should be left alone. So the shepherd will make any trip he must take to bring his lost sheep back home. And what that story that Jesus told us about the lost sheep, it reminds us that God loves all of us. And Jesus is like a shepherd looking after his sheep. And even if one of those isn't behaving and wanders off and does things it shouldn't, Jesus will look after that sheep too. Jesus will look after us when we get into trouble. So I'm wondering for National Story Week, if you could do a little bit of homework for me. Maybe with mums and dads or grands and grandpas or whoever's at home with you, 
you could maybe look at another story that Jesus told us. And you can look in the Bible and that's where all the stories of Jesus are written down. And you might have a Bible, a kid's Bible that looks a bit like this. Or a grown up might need to help you read a story from a Bible like this for adults. Or there's the one that we use in church. And the one that I used to read today was a special one that's got lots of rhyming words and lovely pictures in. And that was called the Rhyming Bible. And there we can see the little lost sheep. Can you see him there at the bottom? Stuck in the bush, the thorny bush, waiting for the shepherd to come and get him. Right, boys and girls, that's it for this morning. Thanks so much for listening. Bye. my burdens holy unto you. Thank you for every friend I have, Lord. Thank you for everyone I know. Thank you when I can feel forgiveness to my greatest foe. Thank you for leisure and employment. Thank you for every heartfelt joy. Thank you for all that makes me happy and for melody. Thank you for every shade and sorrow. Thank you for comfort in your word. Thank you that I am guided by you everywhere I go. Thank you for grace to know your gospel. Thank you for all your spirit. Thank you for your unfailing love which reaches far and near. Thank you for free and full salvation. Thank you for grace to ward it fast. Thank you, oh Lord, I want to thank you that I'm free to thank. Thank you, oh Lord, I want to thank you that I'm free. Let us, in this time of sharing, gather together before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, holy and true, be near us, especially at this time, as we share in our worship together, acknowledging your goodness and your mercy towards each one. We praise you, Lord, for all you are now and all you ever will be in our lives. We ask that you reveal your love to us this day and let us find in you our heart, our desires, our life. Blessed God, be near to us in this time together. Mould us as one in faith and in love. Build us up to be your people, to share with so many who have yet to hear of your name. Empower us here today. Hear our prayer, Lord. Merciful Father, our lives are open before you. You know our wrongs, we seek that you forgive us, remembering our trespasses no more, but remembering us only in your love. Hear our prayer, Lord. Gather us, Almighty Father. Make us strong together as your faithful people. Share our walk in this life, enabling us to follow your way. Lead us, Lord Jesus, light of this dark world, 
guide our path, make our journey your journey. Share with us as we share together. Strike us out on that journey of faith once more. Enable us to share the love of Jesus with all whom we need. In his name, amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 111, and we read from verse 1. With all my heart, I will thank the Lord in the assembly of his people. How wonderful are the things the Lord does. All who are delighted with them want to understand them. All he does is full of honour and majesty. His righteousness is eternal. The Lord does not let us forget his wonderful actions. He is kind and merciful. He provides food for those who honour him. He never forgets his covenant. He has shown his power to his people by giving them the lands of foreigners. In all he does, he is faithful and just. All his commands are dependable. They last for all time. They were given in truth and righteousness. He set his people free and made an eternal covenant with them. Holy and mighty is he. The way to become wise is to honour the Lord. He gives sound judgment to all who obey his commands. He is to be praised forever. Amen.
We turn now to Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 1 and reading from verses 21 to 28. Listen for the word of God. A man with an evil spirit. Jesus and his disciples came to the town of Capernaum and on the next Sabbath Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people who had heard him were amazed at the way he taught. For he wasn't like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. Just then, a man with an evil spirit in him came into the synagogue and screamed, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, Be quiet and come out of the man. The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a loud scream and came out of him. The people were all so amazed that they started saying to one another, What is this? Is it some kind of new teaching? This man has authority to give orders to the evil spirits and they obey him. And so the news about Jesus spread quickly everywhere in the province of Galilee. Amen and thanks be to God for that reading from his holy word. Let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. We give thanks for the adventurous way you choose to relate to your creation, giving freedom and instilling a flair for initiative in all creatures. We give special thanks for the way you formed humanity, bearing a family likeness to yourself and risking your choice of us well knowing the good and bad in our natures. To share with you the work of bringing the world to its true fulfilment. What is more, When we let you down, your covenant with us stays firm and sure. Because you, the one who fashioned us for freedom, have kept faith in us against the odds. We stand in awe before the venturing in love with you have undertaken and continue to undertake for our sakes. Your power made the servant of your grace. We are thankful that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, for us to witness his teachings and healing powers that we are freely and able to witness. We pray and give thanks for all doctors, nurses and emergency workers. May they rejoice in the skills you have given them which enable them to bring hope, healing and wholeness to those in their care. May they also know guidance in supporting times of pain and frustration when their skills are not enough to prevent permanent injury, disability or death. Bless each one of them that they may be a blessing to others. We give thanks to all who work in care and the community and serving all in need. You are a shining light for all the communities you work in. We give thanks to all who are working so hard for the vaccination process that we are holding on to for eradication or reduction of COVID. We give thanks for the friends and neighbours who look out for others. May you bless each and every one, Lord. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a short poem by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. O God of life, your healing touch brings wholeness and salvation. In you, this world you love so much becomes a new creation. 
through Jesus Christ you blessed the poor, unleashed your gifts of healing. You gave new sight, new strength, new life to all your love revealing. O Christ, the loving healer still, you gather us for mission to serve your people who are ill, whatever their condition. You send us to the suffering with medicine and caring. Now make our lives an offering to those who are despairing. Lord, by your Spirit, may we hear the truth of others' stories. May we respect their doubts and fears, their hopes and dreams, their worries. And when their ways are not our own, Lord, give us understanding. Our faith cannot be fully grown when we are too unbending. How long, Lord, shall we serve the poor? A week? A month? A season? We ask the question, hoping for a limit to our mission. But open wide our hearts and you and show us as we are giving your lifelong call to serving you in daily generous living. Did you see Kirsty Watt's recent programme on the BBC called The Years That Changed Modern Scotland? Well, the very first in the series featured a good bit of Kilmarnock with some lovely photography over the town. If you have not yet seen it, then 
you can still get it on BBC iPlayer. I recommend it, and it's certainly worth watching. Here's a clip of the start, and if you watch carefully, you'll be able to spot the church here, the New Lake Kirk, and of course, Rugby Park. This is Kilmarnock, a town once famous for Johnny Walker's whiskey, heavy industry, tractors and textiles, and it's the town where I grew up. I loved growing up in Kilmarnock, and in the five decades since then, much of my hometown and indeed Scotland has changed beyond all recognition. The way we live, the way we play, the way we work, the way we vote has been transformed. Well, it was nice to hear someone being complimentary about Kilmarnock. And here in the middle of winter, it's also nice to see the good weather and the sun shining. But the programme had some rare footage of the opening of the Burns Mall. Now, one of the complaints I've often heard from older members in particular is that in the 1970s, the planners ripped the heart out of Kilmarnock. Well, Kirsty addresses that accusation. See what you think of this. This was a time when Scotland began to see itself and sell itself as distinctively Scottish. And there was greater debate about what kind of country Scotland wanted to be. On a cold and damp October day in 1976, the people of Kilmarnock turned out in their hundreds for the grand opening of a new building. One that captured something of the spirit of the age. This building in the heart of Kilmarnock proves that the 1970s wasn't all about decline, discontent and double denim. It was a decade when Scots learned to embrace a new era of creativity, cars and shopping. At the centre of this huge red brick construction is the Burns Mall. Back in 1976, it was officially opened by Elmer Ross, the wife of the man who'd been the most powerful politician in Scotland and former Secretary of State, Willie Ross. I have great pleasure in declaring open Kilmarnock's new centre and call upon South John Murray to raise the Union Jack. Kamara wasn't alone in experiencing these kind of festivities. Shopping centres like this one grew up in towns and cities all over Scotland. It was the most obvious part of the consumer revolution. They were also accompanied by multi-storey car parks that completely changed the landscape. It was all designed to make shopping an event. Creating these new shopping utopias often meant big changes to townscapes. In Kilmarnock, old streets were demolished to make way for the new centre. It's amazing sitting here, looking around and seeing how little of the central part of Kilmarnock <coughs> remains. This is a map published in 1958, and it shows King Street as it was then and all the streets around it. At least the Royal Bank of Scotland, a handsome building at the top of King Street still survives. The Lathkirk Church here, the church of my childhood, is on the left. But over here where the Burns Mall is, I mean, that whole area, the streets of Forest Street, Duke Street, and most importantly, Waterloo Street, were just obliterated. And in Waterloo Street was where Burns' Kilmarnock edition, his first edition of poetry, was printed and published. I realize now, looking back, it's as if people were desperate to get rid of the old. Everything was about modernity, everything was about the new, even if it meant demolishing the heart of a town. Now, whether you think they demolished the heart of the town or simply embraced the changes of a new era, it certainly was a time of upheaval and a time of great change. But let's not forget that the church was very much part of that change too. 
The old King Street Church was demolished just a few years before when it joined the Portland Road to become the Howard Church. Interesting that at the moment they're now demolishing the building that took the place of the King Street Church. And then the old Portland Road Church, renamed the Howard, was demolished. And the new Howard Church erected, which today we recognise as the Howard Centre. And just as our high streets are having to adapt and change again as shopping moves online, the church is having to reshape and to adapt to the changes that have overtaken us. And we know that because the three congregations of Rickerton, Kilmarnock South and St Andrews and St Marnock's are reshaping as we move forward together. We're looking again at what we do and how we do it. And our online worship is part of that change. But it's also part of a much bigger change which has been greatly accelerated due to this global pandemic and the health crisis that we're all living through. Change isn't something that just happened back in the 1970s, but is happening right here today. And the week that marked the grim milestone of 100,000 COVID deaths was also the week that marked International Holocaust Memorial Day, whose theme this year is Be the Light in the Darkness. I'm sure you'll re remember that it was Jesus who said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in the darkness. Well, our gospel reading today was about a man whose life was lived in the shadow of illness. The Bible describes him as having an evil spirit. But whatever illness or condition he had, in Jesus he found healing that day. Jesus had gathered his folk together and the first thing he did was to head to the synagogue where he began to teach. Now we don't know what he said but we do know that he taught with authority and that he brought healing. In these days when both the church and our communities are facing perhaps the greatest changes in a generation, when at least 100,000 families are left heartbroken and devastated, and many, many more impacted by a virus that has affected schools and churches and shops and the workplace. When many are fearful and concerned about what the future holds, and all at a time when we can't meet up in person because of the current restrictions. This is a time, more than ever, when the healing love of Jesus is needed, and when we each need to be the light shining in the darkness. Amen. Forgive. He lived 
and die to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the Life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still. The calm assurance this child can face in certain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know